So we've talked about fundamental analysis, picking a stock that has a healthy growth rate, and we've, we've covered technical analysis. We want to make sure the stock is in an uptrend. And now we're going to talk a little bit about seasonal analysis in stocks. And my partner, Dwayne Davis, is a computer whiz, and he's done a lot of, a lot of work uh, and research with uh, seasonal analysis. What we did is we went back 50 years in the S&P 500 index, and we went back 30 years in the NASDAQ, and we had the daily price movement of those indexes. So we were able to pinpoint some really good seasonal tendencies in stocks that we can take advantage of. And we found that there was a, there's a bullish period in stocks from, November, from around November 1st through April 30th each year. And that six-month period accounts for 98% of the compounded growth in the Dow average since 1950. So let's think about that. Six-month period accounts for 98% of the total return, compounded return in the Dow. So that's a pretty, pretty strong uh, pattern. And the flip side of that is the period from May 1st through October 31st. And of course, that only accounted for 2% of the gain, compounded gain in the Dow. So you can see there's a clear period there where you want to be in stocks, long, long positions in stocks. And there's a period when you want to lighten up or be out of stocks. Now we're going to take a, year, uh, a look at it. This is a 25-year chart of the Dow, uh, 1950 to 1974. And you can see the bullish period, again, starts around October and ends uh, around April or May. Very strong trend during this period over the 25-year period we're studying here. And here's another 25-year chart. This is from 1975 through 1999. And again, you can see at the end of October to the end of April accounted for almost all of the gain in the Dow for that 25-year period. It's a very strong pattern in the market. And you can see the other period, uh, roughly from June through October, uh, the index actually lost ground during that period. So this uh, points out that strong trend from, from October through the end of April. And we'll show you how we can take advantage of that. If we want to take advantage of that trend, what we'd want to do, obviously, is buy, buy a stock index at the end of October and hold it through the end of April. And we've done studies on just that. If you were to invest $10,000, let's say, at the end of October, what would that have grown to by the end of April over this 50-year period? Uh, and assuming that you bought the Dow average in 1951, uh, by October of 2000, that $10,000 would have grown to 380000 Here's a chart of that equity graph. Uh, you can see from 1951 to 2000, $380,000 growth. That's compounded growth of $10,000 during that seasonal period. Now, what we do is we, uh, during the period from May through October, when we're not in the market, you would invest that money in T-bills and collect interest during the six-month six period where uh, it's not a bullish period. And this chart shows the growth of $10,000 by entering. We, we found out that if you enter uh, the last two trading days in October and then get out the second trading day in May, that your growth of $10,000 will go to $1.7 million. And we have a year-by-year -year, uh, return in your manual uh, of, this, of this strategy, of buying a second, trading, second to last trading day in October and exiting the second day in May. And what we're trying to do there is we're trying to take advantage of that that last two days of each month, and usually the first couple days of the new month, where there's a strong tendency for the market to go up.
Now you can compare that $1.7 million to the other half of the year, where if you invest $10,000 on May 3rd and into the stock market and then exit on the second to last trading day in October, uh, your $10,000 would have grown to $31,000 as opposed to $1.7 million. So you can see that that's a definite trend that you want to take advantage of. Here's the growth of $10,000 to $31,000 during the unfavorable seasonal period. And, that, and this $31,000 was due mostly to the interest that you collected on the T-bills for when you were not invested. And there's several, several securities that you can buy uh, that will track these various indexes. There's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the uh, diamonds, symbol DIA. It trades like a stock, but you, you own shares in all 30 of the Dow stocks. It's a trust. So if you wanted to buy the Dow Average, say on October 28th, you could buy shares in the, uh, in the diamonds, DIA. Uh, the S&P has uh, the spiders, symbol SPY, and the NASDAQ 100 index has the QQQ, the queens. So that's how you would buy an index to take advantage of this strategy. And here's the growth of $10,000 in the S&P index uh, over the same period, 1950 to, or to, to year 2000, where we enter at the end of October and exit at the end of April. Uh, so the by using the timing model, you get about three times the profit than if you just bought the index and just held it for the whole period. Three to four times the profit. So it's definitely worth it to time it during this seasonal period. Okay, and we'll just summarize quickly our uh, timing model. Uh, it, was, it was profitable during the year 2000 bear market. In other words, when we got out on May 2nd, we had a, a profit for that year. Uh, it's simple to understand. All you need is a calendar, and uh, it takes maybe 10 minutes a year to implement it. So it's something you should think about uh, for a portion of your portfolio when you want to enter October 28th and then exit May 5th. It's a, it's a good, simple strategy. It's 100% mechanical. You know exactly when you're going to buy, hold, and, and, and sell. And you saw from the historical returns that the returns of the, the timing model uh, greatly exceed the buy and hold approach uh, with much less risk because you're in the market for a, a shorter period of time. So you're able to defy the conventional wisdom that uh, higher returns require higher risk.